Hi everybody, good day to you. Welcome back to part two reassembly. This is a 2000 Three. Chevrolet Monte Carlo. I think it's an SS 3.8 liter GM V6. Super nice engine. Let's light it up. There we go. We pulled this intake off because we found some oil and engine coolant was mixing and it mixes through a failed gasket at these uh, coolant ports right here in the cylinder head and then that uh, coolant will leak down into the oil mix all together and uh, oil mixes in with the coolant as well it's a it's a communication between the fluids and uh, we had to uh, resolve that issue so we pulled the intake off we've got everything cleaned up I've cleaned out the intake ports we have flushed out the valley and cleaned all the debris out of that with the exception of this leaf right here let's get that out of there we don't need you so now we're gonna go fetch the intake fetch the gaskets they have arrived and uh, we're gonna prep this uh, this engine block and get this thing put back together and back on the road. So stay tuned because this is gonna be a very good part two. All right, time to start unboxing some parts. This has been previously opened because it was sealed with scotch tape. These are supposed to be non-returnable if opened, but uh, this one was returned. Anyway, this one, that's our upper intake gasket. So let's go and just, uh, stick this guy in right now and we'll flip this guy over I took everything outside and blew all this stuff off gave it a spray down it was kind of dirty uh, see that that's the EGR tube right there we don't want to forget that so let's see how does this go we go like this pull the tube back out pluck that guy in like so Get rid of some old gasket material. I need to blow this off some more. It's nasty. Super clean. Loud noises powering down. So what we need to do is we fit this into the tube. There's a little hole right there that has to fit inside of that. And then we can snap this plenum gasket on. There we go, no seal it needed. It already has seals. All right, that's good. We don't need this old one anymore. Let's go set up the uh, manifold gaskets next. I think they're in another box. Okay, don't need that box. This is our, our lower gasket set right here. This one's been opened as well. Hmm, not returnable if opened. Okay, these are the these are the updated metal gaskets. Uh, yeah, this stuff's all Felpro stuff. It's what I bought, not sponsored. Don't need that. Uh, we've got fuel injector O-rings. These are the the block seals for the end of the block. A little bit of sealant. There's actually two types for those block seals, but I think those are the ones. So I'm not going to use these ones thermostat gasket and more o-rings for the injectors we'll do that stuff later okay so what i'm going to do i'll fit these block seals first just to make sure everything looks good and it seems to line up they fit in there in such a way where oil shouldn't be permitted to pass through them it's a it's a little sneaky we'll have to put some silicone sealant uh, at the corners because oil can seep out uh, at the area between the head and the engine block and we don't want that either. So this is kind of like a, a one chance only type of operation. Let's see here. Because if we don't get this sealed properly, it'll leak and then I have to do it again. And I do like my job, but I don't want to do it twice. Hmm. Okay. Yep. Do we see how these end pieces right here, they kind of tuck behind the, uh, the block seal right there? You can uh, inadvertently get them on top like this, and you don't want to do that. you got to tuck it down behind there. Um, I will have to pull all this up because I do need some sil uh, silicone there, but I'm just kind of test fitting everything to make sure it's going to live in harmony uh, once it's installed in this engine. Oh, we also need to get the... Uh, little coolant elbow installed as well that's important we're going to find that there's uh there's two versions of these coolant elbows and i ordered both because i didn't know which one it was there's the the equal length 90 degree version and then there's also one where this uh 
This side is a shorter length, but it's wider. Uh, this particular car is gonna use this one. Um, actually, there's more than two versions because you can get these in the metal and you can get them in the plastic and I never buy them in plastic when the metal is available. So don't ever put one, don't ever put the plastic one in there. You saw what happened when we tried to take it apart in the last episode. Oh, by the way, if you missed the last episode, just check the link in this video's description and it will take you back to part one. So what I will do, I'll put a little bit of a dielectric lubricant on that O-ring so it slides in very nice like. And we'll get this guy in position first, like so. Okay, time to get some sealant in the appropriate locations. So what we'll do, I'll dismantle these gaskets. We need a dab right here in the corner. Evenly spread. Another one right here in that corner. There we go. And you don't have to, but I always like to just put a real thin film on the bottom of this little gasket here, just, just in case. Maybe some on the top of the block. Some people are saying, gonna say that's the wrong way, but that's what I like to do. It's my way. Everybody's different. Okay, I'll plug that guy in. We'll seat the little corners, see that? And I'll do the same thing over here on this side. Let's get these guys out of the way. Pop that up. Sealant. More sealant right here on that corner. Can't see. I'm terrible cameraman. There it is. And a little bit right here on the top of the block. And I'm very generous with this on these corners. That's a high probability leaking area. We don't want that to leak. Okay, so we got the, uh, the end seals on. Time for one more dab of sealant here and here after we get the gaskets back in position here. Yep, see that? Actually, I'm gonna double up on this down, down here, right there. A little bit more. Gasket coming in. It's got alignment pegs here and here that locate that gasket in its proper position. There we go. And then we're gonna be looking for one more dab of sealant right here on the top side. So that entire corner is encapsulated with some sealant. That's the idea. A little bit right there. Make a nice transition to the rest of it. And we'll do the same on this uh, on the front side here. A little bit right there. And another one right over here to the right off screen. I had moved the cam, but I'm, I'm covered in sealant. My bottle just split open. Look, that was not good. Making a mess. Okay, gasket number two is coming in. I'm gonna set the quarters down in position, get the little alignment pegs plugged in. And then again, a little bit more sealant right here on the top. And a little bit right here on the top of that other side. There we go. Since I've got some extra, why not? Let's put it right here. Yeah, I've got extra, see it? That's a lot of extra. All right, let's back this up and get the lower mani manifold words installed. All right, lower manifolds coming into position. We've got the ceiling surfaces all cleaned up, polished to a nice shiny, shinish, shinyish uh, state. It's clean, there we go. So what I need to do is we're gonna insert the manifold over this little uh, coolant elbow here and then slide it down 
and into place. That's the plan. And of course, time is working against us right now because this sealant is setting up. So what we need to do is move over here a little bit and I'll go ahead and get this manifold down and in position. So we really only get one good shot at this. Anyway, it's gonna be fine, but it's a little tricky. Tricky, tricky, tricky. The goal here is to not smear the sealant and to, uh, to not break our little coolant elbow thing as well. Let's see here. Now let's see. Let's angle that down some. It's a, it turns into a real tight squeeze in here. There we go. Elbows in position. And we're, we're almost there. Just kind of wiggle it some. And it looks like all of my, uh, my bolts are lining up. Gaskets are in position here. Almost. Okay, so we're all lined up. The bolt holes look pretty good. Let's check our seals on the end and make sure they didn't get pushed out. The uh, coolant elbow is in position. And seal on this end looks like it's in position. We're good to go. Let's go ahead and start threading some bolts. Let's just get these guys dropped in. We're gonna get them all threaded and we'll slowly kind of work some torque into them. We don't wanna pinch those gaskets or put any like side loads on them. We want this to uh, compress nice and evenly. Evenly. I think I stuttered or slurred that word, I don't remember. I might have. Not really thinking about my speech patterns. Just trying to get this uh, this thing installed mistake free. Cause I do love my job, but I don't want to do this one twice. Not at all. And uh, there's of course the hidden ones. There we go, we got that one in. And there's one more. Where's that other one more at? There it is. Okay. Awesome. Put a little bit of pressure on this. All right. Okie doke. So the torque spec on uh, these particular fasteners is 11 newton meters, or I'm sorry, 15 newton meters, which is 11 foot pounds of torque. So we're using the, uh, the little guy. I don't know if we can hear the clicks or not. Yeah, sure we can. Begin actual clickages, there we go. I'm gonna end up doing two passes on this. That one's not even tight anymore. See how when you when you run them down, the remaining or the uh, the ones that were already torqued kind of lose their stretch because the assembly is being brought uh, brought down closer to the man to the uh, the heads. I don't know what I'm talking about. More clicks. And I'm just gonna keep running through the sequence until they all stop and I no longer get any gasket compression. The, uh, the book doesn't say to run multiple sequences, but I do on this engine. It's just my thing. Get that hidden guy. Air socket. All right, now we're good. We're torqued. Excellent. Good. 
Woohoo! All right, loud noises. I'm gonna blow out all these ports again from the bottom up just to make sure there's nothing in there. Carbon. Next on my hit list is gonna be all this other uh, supporting equipment. Let's get the EGR tube back in, thermostat, the hoses, and then we'll get the upper intake on and start getting that thing fastened down. Now, if I remember, this thing was a little sneaky to remove, so it's probably gonna be a little sneaky to install. We'll see. I'll pry bar it. Oh, that was easy. Went right in, look at that. I had the finesse. I finessed it just right. Gave it some some EGR tube love. Come here. And a little bit of torque on these two 13s. And we'll be good. Okay, let's bolt this guy down. Fix. Same thing right here. Oh, there we go. Had to order a gasket. Let's go ahead and get the uh, upper manifold installed. That's real easy. We need to get the wiring harness out of the way. Oops. Ah, gravity. Gasket gravity. Hang on. Redo. Cut. Come here. Right, let's try this again. I'm all bunch of fingers. So I need to slip this little uh, bung thing right here inside of there. There we go. Now, let me get this thing installed. And I had to slip the EGR tube that was sticking up from the manifold into the port on this upper manifold. Okay, that's seated, that's flush. We can bolt this thing down next. Let's put this harness up and over where it belongs. Right there, that runs over there. Good, 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 good. And bolts, let's get them, let's get them in here. That one goes right there. Get that one started, good. Okay, all the fasteners are dropped in. I threaded them to save us video time. Let's go ahead and run these down a little bit and then we can get them torqued to spec. I think these are like 20 foot pounds or inch pounds or newton meters. I have to check. I don't know. But I will check. Fear not. See, this is a plastic component and torque matters on plastic. There we go. Okay, that thing is now seated. That's in position. Let's get it torqued. Well, I was wrong. I was way off. It's a uh, 89 inch pounds or a uh, 10 newton meters that was pretty low lower than i thought Let's begin actual clicks now you gonna do it or what there it is okay i didn't have them nearly as tight as i should have to start that's okay not tight enough is better than too tight when coming up on torque. Okay. It's not working for me. Let me just speed this up some. Oop, I missed one. Now I did not miss one. Aha. All right, returning to actual clicking. Now 
And again, this is compressing that entire gasket. So I'm gonna go back to the first ones and recheck them. We are getting a little bit of motion out of them still. That one, a couple more to go. Okay, there's one 10 mil over here. Oh, where'd that go? Rot roll. Got it. I see you. 10 mil socket recovery. Click. I had the EGR shield bracket uh, reinstalled. Let's go ahead and run that thing down real quick. All righty, moving on some. Got our fuel rail here with our injectors. They've all been re-o-ringed and I've got a little bit of a lubricant on there so they seat well. Let's go ahead and get this thing down in position and bolt it in. Then we will get the wiring harnesses all set up. Let's see here. Making sure nothing gets captured or pinched like this wire. And we're gonna get all the injectors kind of in the hole a little bit and a little bit of slight down pressure should uh, seat them without uh, that issue. Just kind of wiggle them in. If you don't put lube on it, it's a lot harder to get it in. And we've got our nuts. One, two, three. There it is. That one in the back. Okay. Okay, so quick 10 mil action. You wanna make sure those are uh, all the way seated. I just saw it too, Mommy. You did? Yeah. That's good. And you wanna make sure those are all the way seated uh, before torquing the nuts because you could break the injector. That would be bad. All right, let's move in some get the rear injectors connected. Let's see, that, uh, that's the alternator. There's one fuel injector right here. Become plugged in, please. Am I doing this right? Hmm, what this problem? Oh, I had it bass backwards, that's what was going on. I see what I've done. I've uh, realized the error of my ways. Let's that one in too. Just come on, get in there. Now, all right, that's the last injector. So what we're looking for, what's next on my to-do list? We have a bracket right here. There's a O2 sensor back there. We gotta get that one. Here, more lumens. Now we can see. Plug that unit in and then attach it to its bracket after installing a little safety lock. See that? Plug that guy in. That's good. Right here, this one, that's our alternator control circuit. Plug that in and then our 13. For the uh, alternator output wire. Let's get that guy on. No impacts on the alternator stud. Because you'll break it. Click. Okay, let's get all this fuel line stuff set up here. Get these guys plugged in. Little bracket. That one there. Vacuum line, 
Oh, I love the home stretch section. And we've got our solenoid here. Clip that guy into its bracket. Plug her in. Na, 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 na. Vacuum line for our fuel pressure regulator. That goes right here. So everybody's connected, connected, connected. Idle air control, mass airflow, throttle position sensor, and this one is for intake air temperature, which is in the little ducting. I'll get that later. Uh, we forgot a vacuum line. This goes back onto that vacuum port down there. See that? That's good. Alrighty, I think I'm there. We need to do spark plugs and oil change and then we're in the home stretch. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna knock these up, these first three spark plugs out and get the wires set up and then I'm gonna go back off and I'll do the rear ones real fast and then we can, uh, we can proceed. Okay, like I said, we're gonna power through this a little bit. So let me pop these plug wires off. Come here. There. The reason I'm putting wires on it is because these always like to break when uh, removing them and there's not much we can do about it. Unkick. See how these old ones looked. Not terrible. They're OEs, I think. They're Delco. They look like they've got the 70 something thousand on them. Good. Same units are going in. AC Delcos. OE quality. I don't like to change uh, spark plugs too far away from what the OE spec is. For example, I wouldn't put auto lights in this or champions. In fact, I don't think I would put champions in anything. No offense to champions. I just don't like them. Kick. There we go. Number two. Wire gravity. Get in there. Please. Start it off by hand. Get you in there. Very nice. Go. That's two. All right, number three coming in. Pull that guy out. Come on. See, they get really, really stuck. Seriously? Let's try some leverage. I'll break you off, I don't care. Plug number three coming in. Get her started. I'll run it down. Mix. Okay, plug wires. You guys are next. Delco's just like the ones we took off. Now this is the front bank, so let's go ahead and pull the short ones out. There. Okay, long ones are set aside. Here's our short ones. Start with our shortest one first, match them up. Through the engine mount. And, oh, I need some dielectric, hang on. Let's get a little bit of lubricant in there. Our heat shield, gotta have the heat shield. Get her plugged in. Mm, click so we know we're good. 
Now, this is cylinder number one, so let's go ahead and plug that into number one. Right there, they're labeled one, four, two, five, three, and six. Okay, a little bit more grease in there, just a dab to prevent uh, water intrusion. Here's three. Click that one on, here's five. Click that one on. There we go. And then we'll run these through the engine mount, connect them to the coil as well. So we'll do, here's number five going in. That's connected and number three going through. Also connected. Okay, I need to get way back and down to those uh, rear spark plugs. So while I have the engine mounts removed, I'm gonna hook a ratchet strap up to this guy and we're gonna just pull it forward with the ratchet strap and that's gonna give me some more access in the back of the engine. Pull her on forward a wee bit. Nothing crazy, we don't wanna break our engine or the intake. Now I've got some space back here to get my hands in and I can finagle out these uh, last three plugs and wires. So uh, I'll be right back, don't go anywhere. We're gonna do this in super high speed and lightning fast. Okay, brackets back on, all the plugs are in, all three of the rear side wires are in. That was fun. We've got a 15 mil to tighten down right here. Oh. Where's my socket? Here we go. I'll use that impacting pick. Okay, brackets on. Let's release the uh, the ratchet strap. This thing's gonna go back to where it's supposed to be, and I can get the front motor mounts installed. Let it down easy. There we go. Get this thing out of here. Bye. Okay, motor mounts. Let's get these wishbone guys in their home here. Oh, they made it to the ground, no worries. I will get it. There's one mount. And I just need to kind of pull on the engine some to get it lined up. Probably should have left that uh, ratchet strap on. No worries. Muscle power. There's one. Second one's right here, yeah, right in front of us. Same procedure. Slip it through, bolt it in. There's a wiring harness bracket here that needs to feed through, no problem. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Plugs are installed. Fronts, rears, nader, bracket, fuel, emissions, harnesses, intake, cables, vacuum. All right, everything's looking good. We need to get this up in the air, dump out the oil because there's coolant in it, and uh, fill with fresh oil, and then we can start the engine. Cool beans, moving on up. Black subscribe button. All the way up. Let's go ahead and pull this drain plug and see what treasures lie within. I think it's gonna be nasty in there. Let's find out today. Some light on the subject. Oh. Let's see what we get. Is it oil or is it something else? Okay, looks like it's just oil. 
It's not bad. Bunch of coolant stuff didn't come out. That's good. Hmm, filter is up here behind that control arm. See it in there? I see you sneak this guy out of its home, avoiding spillages. Huh, gloves are coming in handy today. Soil's nasty. It's been here for a while. Come out. Come on, you piece of filter. Hmm. It's not gonna fit. How about through the top? Sure. Got it. Okay, a little bit of manual torque here. Clickage. And my spray. Where's my where's my spray? Hmm. Yeah, let's hose this off and get out of here. And refill the engine. Shiny. Goodbye, oil drippages. Air. Okay, back up top, pouring things. Uh, this is not 520, as the bottle says. I just used it for a delivery bottle. This is 5 Winter 30 fully synthesized engine oil. I think we need five quarts. Glug, glug. Hmm. That's in the way. Good. Okay, preliminary dipstick check. What do we have here? Plug it in, pull it out. Well, we need another quart. Not quite there just yet. Maybe three quarters of a quart. Because I put in a quarter quart, roughly 12 ounces a pint. I don't know, math. I put some I put some extra in when I did the uh, the additive there, which is a uh... right, funnel's empty. Recheck, and then we can restocking the engine. All right, we're right on our full line. Filter is not primed yet, so I can go for a couple more ounces. There we go. Okay, let's start it and check it. You done? Woohoo. Okay, cap clickages. There we go. Okay, oil spilled, caps on, levels approximately accurate. We're low on coolant and that needs to be cleaned out with some Tide Pods or something. Battery is connected. Let's go ahead and stopping the engine. Give the reach in treatment here. Begin engine stocking sequence now. It is alive! Yes! Okay, we've got oil pressure, we've got volts. We got fuel, we got no check engine lights. This is good, everything we need is right here. Let's get this off the rack. I'm gonna pull it outside, hose the engine off, give it the wash down treatment. And uh, we can work on, uh, on handling that coolant situation after that. But uh, I think that is gonna be saved uh, for uh, future content. Warning, warning, door ajar. Okay, let's pull this bad boy on out. Runs very well, so far so good. We'll hose it off, let it run for a while, check it for leaks, and uh, I can proceed with additional uh, operations at a later date and time. So uh, that being said, we're gonna go ahead and clean this off. I'm gonna close this video out. I'd like to thank you guys for watching this series of videos on this uh, intake manifold replacement job. One of my favorite jobs to perform on these GM 3.8s and 3.4s, 3.5s, 3.1s. I think the 3.9 is the same way. Either way, I like this operation. It's fast, it's efficient, and uh, it's something I like to do. So again, and as always, thank you guys for watching this video. And most importantly, do not forget to have yourselves a great day. Begin nice and shiny operation now.
Mm-hmm. Walk on the nasty yard. Goodbye, non-shiny. Throw some water in there for now. We're gonna do a Tide Pod cool flush procedure. Get rid of all this old nasty and get some nice, fresh, good coolant in there. Oh, by the way, fun fact. If you don't replace the gasket on that upper intake, it will leak coolant into the engine at an alarming rate because the, uh, there is coolant that passes through that. I may have mentioned that earlier, but I'd like to reiterate it at this time. So shiny. Good. Okie dokes, mission complete. Goodbye, Monte Carlo.